Why did Riot remove these small buffs from Sona, like the AA conceal and taking a ward, being able to Q for target invis and slowing Olaf and his ult? So, I'm going to speak to very one specific one of those. The question was like, why did we remove certain things from Sona that were cool, fun things she could do to optimize for Sona players? And one of the things referenced was he she could slow Olaf in his ultimate. One of the things that I think is very important to think about when you're designing a champion is you need to be really deliberate about breaking certain rules, especially rules that are like defensive rules for a character that like a character bases their identity around. So like, as an example, when Olaf ultimates, he does it with the assumption that nothing can stop him. And whenever you break that rule for your champion, you're like, well, my champion can stop Olaf then you have degraded Olaf's ultimate in a very meaningful way. So it really better be worth it for your character. Morgana Black Shield. If Black Shield says my character can't be CC'd and you make a spell that says I can CC you through Black Shield, you know, doing that once, maybe that's okay, but you have degraded Morgana's defensive capability by doing that. And generally I'd say in a game, it's important that defensive outputs of characters like follow rules that usually are clear it's not that you can't break the rules um it's not that you can't break the rules um but if you do break the rules they really really need to have a good reason to do so and it can't just be like this was a fun optimization for my character it has to be bigger than that so like someone mentioned well rel breaks morgana's e and that one's reasonable because Rel has another rule. Rel's rule is I break shields. So I think it's reasonable in Rel's case to be like, yeah, I break Morgana's shield because I break shields, right? She has her own rule. But like, if you're just special casing something where it's like, oh yeah, Sona, she can just slow CC immune characters, right? It's like, I would say like, well, why? What, what is the, the purpose or, or reason for her to be able to do that? And I think it's, it's a pretty high bar you need to pass to let a character break a character's defensive rules. Because defensive rules generally are put in place to make that character able to function in the average game at their job. And so, yeah, it's just things to think about. And I, I would say Sona having a cool optimization around her power cord is not high enough in the priority table to overrule Olaf's entire ultimate not working specifically versus her in that moment. Thoughts on giving AD Assassins Lethality Scaling? To be quite honest, they don't need it. They already have Lethality Scaling, it's their spells. They have spells with base damages and high AD ratios that multiply directly with, leth with Lethality. Um, and so I'm not really convinced that they would need Lethality Scaling to function. I would say that if they don't feel like they work with Lethality, it's probably it's probably a thing where they either need better base damages on their spells or their lethality items need to serve them better, would be my question. But yeah, like they essentially all have lethality ratios. Um, the reason Pike has explicit lethality ratios is number one is we needed a way for him to like scale his utility as a support off lethality because he was like building tank and stuff. And so that was one of the important things for Pike is to actually, because supports want to scale their utility, we gave him lethality ratios to do that. And the other lethality ratio Pike has is his ultimate. And the reason it has a lethality ratio is counterintuitively, Pike's ult doesn't work with lethality. Because it's just a it's just um it's a threshold-based true damage execute, right? And so we had this AD assassin whose ult, his ultimate and a big part of his AD assassin damage, like was an anti-scaler with the stat he's supposed to scale with. So the reason his ultimate scales with lethality is that that actually makes it scale when normally it doesn't, comparative to other AD Assassin ults already scale with lethality as long as they do physical damage, because they, they do physical damage. And so, yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of like view the idea of like lethality ratios for damage on AD Assassins similar to like having a cooldown ratio on a spell you want someone to cast a lot. It's like, well, it already has a, a ratio in that cooldown and so it scales with cooldown reduction right it feels like it's maybe more than you really need there and if you are doing lethality ratios again my thought is the place to do them would be 
to you know scale something like utility so like you know pike's explicit the ones on his utility or senna's explicit ones on her heel that she used to have stuff like that i think is a bit more effective for making lethality scale with the character otherwise you could just buff their base damages or something um assassins tend to get more value from bruiser items right now instead of building lethality if that's the case it is likely the case that lethality items are weak right so if assassins are all saying we build bruiser and bruiser is good um and we, we pair that with the knowledge that League of Legends is a game that's been around for over a decade, and during that decade, there have been, in most metas, assassins building lethality items without lethality ratios and being affected with them. If you combine those two thoughts, assassins are building Bruiser, and um, for most of League's history, assassins have built lethality items. The, the thing that that directs me to, in my mind, is not assassins suddenly need lethality ratios it would be there maybe is something wrong with the lethality items that would prevent them from feeling like they're effective purchases compared to bruiser or on the flip side maybe some bruiser items are just really 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 strong i i don't know i think that's like one thing that's worth thinking about too so there's this question a tune of question i often get on the stream is hey this character or thing right now doesn't work and therefore it needs a rework or it needs a major massive change to work that's a very reasonable line of thinking right it doesn't work it's broken unbreak it by reworking it or doing a huge change right one of the things i tend to like to temper with that thought with when i hear it is did it work in the past and Especially if a game has like a long history, right? Like, you know, League's got 10 years of history as an example. And if it worked in the past, what changed? And that's something that I think sometimes when I hear these questions about, hey, this thing needs a rework because it's not working, you it, it, it sometimes is forgotten, I think, that extra step you should do, which is if it worked in the past, what is different now? Because sometimes things have changed so meaningfully that you do need to rework it, right? Sometimes things are so different, the game is just completely different, and like, yeah, now your character needs lethality ratios because it's just the game has changed so fundamentally that you can't really compare the past to it. But the reason looking to the past in these cases can be helpful is a lot of times the past will tell you, well, it worked, and here's why. And, and sometimes that can help you find the thing that changed that maybe prevented, that caused the breakage and then, you know, can give you a plan of attack, which sometimes might be do a big rework, but oftentimes can be, oh, there's maybe a simpler, lighter touch you could do that will, you know, get the thing back in working order.